Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas Eve, everyone. I hope you're enjoying time with your family, eating delicious food, and most importantly, watching great movies. But in case you don't know what to watch this Christmas Eve, I got your back. Here's my six quintessential Christmas movies I watch every year. Welcome back Christmas movie fans and hello to your families if you're watching this with them. Every year is a struggle to decide what to watch, whether we fall back on old favorites or add new Christmas magic to the tradition. We all have different movies that we connect to and we all have different movies that we grew up watching and look back upon with fond nostalgia. This list isn't necessarily from worst movie to best movie. These are just the movies I always go back to every single Christmas, from childhood classics to recent additions to the tradition that I always love to share. Some of these are well known, some of these are obvious, but others may be hidden gems. So I cannot wait to see your Christmas watch list. I cannot wait to see what your traditions feature. These are just the movies that represent my Christmas and I cannot wait to see which ones represent yours. But before you get going with this list, don't forget the fun part where you share your Christmas movie watching traditions in the comments below. If you enjoy lists like this but want to see them ranked from worst to best, there's many more of them right up here on the channel. So if you want to see those, if you want to see more like this, if you want to talk more movies and TV, this is the place to be. So consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. So without any further ado, let's get started. And up first is Netflix's Klaus, the latest addition to my Christmas marathon. Such a gorgeous looking film with such a unique visual palette and identity. It's essentially the origin story of Christmas. And as a superhero fan, in case you couldn't tell, I love my origin stories. So seeing how Santa came to be as we know him and finding that Christmas magic within his own heart, exploring all those themes and messages that warm your heart, life-affirming story of regaining that hope that we associate with Christmas, it just makes this a beautiful journey about finding oneself and what we can give to the world. It's exactly what Christmas is all about and I just love seeing Lost Santa being given hope once more. Plus the incredible voice cast really helps and the score is as gorgeous as the visuals. This is a film that not many people have seen, so if you are one of those people, make sure to add this to your Christmas tradition. Next up, The Man Who Invented Christmas, a film with such a unique creative approach to its story. It's part Charles Dickens biopic, part Christmas movie, part Dickensian mythos. Blends it all together in a way that portrays the man, but also portrays how his stories came to his mind and how he interacts with his creation in such engaging, fun, imaginative ways. There's a little bit of horror. There's a little bit of whimsy. There's a little bit of what has made us all fall in love with Charles Dickens stories across generations. It's a testament to his value as a storyteller and it explores a little bit of his family life growing up, but also a testament to how his stories have stood the test of time, what truly makes them timeless. And on top of it all, it's just really fun to see a storyteller interact with his creations. You see him interacting with Oliver Twist, you see him interacting with Scrooge, and Christopher Plummer as Scrooge is a version of the character we don't talk about enough. Again, this is a hidden gem 
not many people have seen, but if you like Charles Dickens, if you like Christmas movies, if you like a little bit of edge to them, this is exactly what you should add to your Christmas watch list. Predictably enough, Jingle All The Way is on rotation every single year. And originally, it started as a guilty pleasure. I once looked upon this film as just really trashy. I just love seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of my favorite actors of all time, being in this silly, cheesy, goofy Christmas movie. Put that cookie down, now! But over time, it maintains that cheesiness, it maintains that silliness, but it celebrates them, all the while being the most accurate depiction of what it is like to be a parent during Christmas season. Dealing with all these problems of trying to get this one toy for his kid, and he forgets to get this toy <laughs> until Christmas Eve. But this kind of storyline, this kind of cheesiness and silliness needs that heightened Arnold Schwarzenegger personality to make it all work. We're not going into this film for nuance or sophisticated hidden meanings. It's just silly fun that celebrates the cheeriness, but also the chaos of Christmas. It's a movie that completely buys into its silly premise, into this heightened reality that climaxes with a man dressing up as the toy his kid wants for Christmas, fighting off against another guy who's just trying to do the same thing for his own kid, but he's the villain. This is the kind of genuine festive laughs we all need during Christmas. It's a Wonderful Life, of course, has to be present in any Christmas movie watch list, and it's just a very simple movie that explores how powerful a change in perspective is. It very much carries all the essence, all the DNA of A Christmas Carol, the lessons, the messages, the themes, appreciate what you have during the time where you have it with those you have around you, but it manages to just tweak the formula enough to, after 70 years, still be the most unique take on the classic Charles Dickens tale. And it's a film that is straight to the point. It's simple. It doesn't try to overcomplicate things, but it still profoundly resonates with our emotions. There is something intrinsically human about the character journey in this film and the divine helping hand that comes his way, where he's placed as a mere observer to his life or lack thereof, to bear witness what his loved ones would be like and would go through without his presence. It's a beautiful story that shows how one life is so important to the world around us. Messages like this to make us feel all warm and fuzzy in our tum-tums are exactly what we need, whether it is the season or at any other point during the year. Mickey's A Christmas Carol, yet another Charles Dickens story or version of the classic Charles Dickens story. This might be cheating for some of you because this is essentially a half hour short and not a feature length film, but to me, to this day, this is still the quintessential Christmas Carol. This is the version of the story that comes to my mind when I hear that title. It's simple, effective, and straight to the point, and in just half an hour manages to hit all those familiar emotional beats in the most powerful way possible. That's not to say that there aren't other great versions of the story. Of course, Muppets A Christmas Carol is a good runner-up, but to me, having Scrooge McDuck as literal Scrooge, seeing that journey through his life from the outside in without padding it out, just going straight for the emotional juggler, is just the one I most powerfully connect to. It has been the one whose emotional beats just hit a hundred percent in the way they're meant to. And to me, it is the unbeatable version of the classic story that I not only love to watch, but I also love to read. It is the greatest Christmas story ever told, or at least it would be if it was not for Die Hard, the greatest Christmas movie of all time. And there is no debate. Die Hard 
is factually a Christmas movie. John McClane travels across the country to go to his wife's office Christmas party because he wants to bring his family back together for Christmas. He wants to give that to his wife. He wants to fix his marriage. He wants to recognize him his mistakes and just gift his wife the words. She's heard me saying I love you a thousand times. She never heard me say I'm sorry. There is absolutely nothing more Christmassy than that. The message of bringing family together, making amends, letting go of grievances, and coming together in the spirit of unity. On top of that, you just have a great action film, one of the greatest of all times, with a great action hero that feels human, that feels flawed, that is going on this journey of self-reflection, looking back on the past year and years. And you also have one of the greatest villains of all time, who, thanks to our hero, kind of begins to hate Christmas with John McClane's messages of, ho ho ho, now I have a machine gun. All the jokes revolve around Christmas, and all our hero wants to do is spend Christmas peacefully at home with his wife and kids. But to get there, he just happens to have to shoot some people around in the most explosive, action-packed celebration of the festivities ever. Die Hard is the greatest Christmas movie of all time, and I don't know about you, but to me, it is not Christmas until I see Hans Gruber fall off Nakatomi Plaza. And those are my six quintessential Christmas movies I watch every year. Thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait to see what movies take part in your Christmas tradition. Big thanks to my channel members for always supporting the channel. And I'll be back very soon with more videos. So until the next one, love each other, love the movies, and Merry Christmas.